And now I'm going to let Alex take, um, take over and take you through the funds in a little bit more detail. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. I think it's afternoon now. Mike said good morning. Um, really good to be here. I'm Alex being a partner in our Raleigh office, and we really appreciate you all coming. It's, it, you'll hear this multiple times. It really is the best day of the year for us to spend some time with you all and uh, tell you about what we have going on. And uh, as Mike mentioned, we've had a lot of success and, and activity over the last year. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that as it relates to the funds. Now that everybody's finished lunch, we're going to get into the deep detail. So get ready for that. Um, but some great, great comments here, and, and we'll, we'll keep it brief. So start with Plexus Fund 1. It's an $81 million fund that was raised in 2005. Uh, $81 million includes the SBA leverage. And we're in the process of closing that fund down at this point. There are a small number of residual positions remaining. Um, and we'll have, should have that fund wound down sometime later this year. A strong line of sight on returns, so 1.7 times net cash on cash to our LPs and a 10.5% net IRR. And we're proud of this performance. The Fund One was invested through the Great Recession, as you know, and we delivered a net double-digit return to our investors, which is one of the highest performing funds uh, for the asset class and vintage. So we're very proud of that. And I'll also mention that the tax profile of those returns is favorable to our investors. It's over 50% classified as long-term capital gain. So moving to Plexus Fund 2, Fund 2 is a $175 million fund, uh, including SBA leverage raised in 2009. And we're fully deployed on Fund 2. 108% of the fund size was invested in 28 platform companies. And we're now at the point in the fund life where we're winding it down. We're monetizing. As Mike mentioned, we've had several exits over the last year. Um, and that will continue to accelerate here as we wind down the last few investments that are left in the fund. So since last year's annual meeting, these are the deals that are fund two uh, companies that were exited. And I won't get into the specifics of each one, but I, what I would note is that these four deals are representative of the types of deals you'll find in our portfolio through every fund. So one deal was supported by a private equity group. Uh, one deal was direct with a management team to support their growth. And two deals were partnered with independent sponsors. So I think that's a representative mix of what you'll see in our portfolio. And as you know, timing of exits is very difficult for us to predict. Uh, we don't control the exit at all times, and we take a long-term approach to the way that we manage the portfolio, knowing that some of our deals will underperform expectations, some will outperform expectations. And when we exit a deal, it's always good to get positive feedback from the management team that we worked with. And uh, this is a letter that we received from the COO of Global Value Commerce after we exited in late 2017. And we were really touched by this letter. And then a few excerpts are on the screen here, and I'll, I'll comment on a couple of them. Dave Hunt is the CEO's name. Dave says, in my view, one of the best decisions our management team ever made was to partner with Plexus Capital in 2010. And I can only say thank you with every ounce of energy I can muster. You have a friend for life. So clearly, that's great feedback. We, we were touched to receive the letter. And in addition to a great financial outcome for our Fund 2 investors, uh, this letter, I think, is an example of the relationship building that we do that leads to future deals and really helps us with a differentiated reputation in the market. So Fund 2, we called $47 million of private capital. And because of exits like Global Value, we've distributed $98 million to investors to date. There's still value left in the fund that we hope to monetize here in the next couple of years. Um, and you know, we're proud of the performance in Fund 2. Uh, during most of the Fund 2 investment period, we were statistically out of the recession. Uh, did not feel that way at the time. And I'll tell just a quick story about that. My very first investment committee meeting as a Plexus employee, I think in January of 2010, uh, the team was debating whether to put some more money into one of our Fund 1 companies, but we were actively investing Fund 2 at the time. And it was a heated debate. Didn't sound like things were going very well. Statistically, at that time, we were out of the recession. I've been on site for all of three hours and really scratching my head of what I got myself into. Uh, but that deal ended up returning over two times cash on cash. And uh, I think it's just consistent with our strategy that throughout a tough economic period, consistently deployed money in prudent structures with great management teams. 
Um, and we expect the, the fund to deliver 2.2 to 2.3 times net cash on cash to investors and a 23 to 24% net IRR. And similar to fund one, the tax profile should be very favorable with greater than 50% uh, classified as long-term capital gain. So moving to Plexus fund three, uh, fund three has 300 million of capital, including SBA leverage, and was raised in 2013. We're fully deployed on Plexus Fund three. We've invested 124% of the fund size, uh, which I'll get into a little more detail on that in a minute on capital efficiency that allowed us to do that uh, in 34 companies. And we did that by in reinvesting early exits and, uh, and redeploying that money on your behalf. So in fund three, we called 55% of private capital, lower than Plexus fund one and two, where we called 80%. And we learned a lot about how to utilize our fund line of credit and become more efficient with the way that we call capital and call our SBA leverage. So improved efficiency with called capital allowed us to invest over 100% of the fund size and we're maintaining a higher balance for a longer period of time in the fund, which will drive LP returns higher. And we're also fortunate last year uh, which we talked some about this morning for those of you that were there to receive a large repayment from our portfolio Grease, portfolio company Grease Monkey, um, which allowed us to avoid a 15% capital call at that time uh, to pay down our line of credit. So the capital efficiency of the line of credit allowed us to be um, a little bit more judicious with how we use that private capital. Uh, we drew 100% of our SBA debt in Fund 3, which we were not able to do in Funds 1 and 2. Uh, so $150 million of SBA debt at a very favorable weighted average rate of 3.3%. Um, again, keeping the, the fund balance at a very high level longer allows us to utilize that SBA debt for a longer period of time, which enhances LP returns as well. So to put, a little, put some numbers around the better capital utilization um, of our fund three capital, because we were more efficient with the line of credit, as I mentioned, we invested 124% of the fund size, which is $371 million of a $300 million fund, compared to 108% in funds one and two. So we're pleased with this outcome, and, and as I said before, uh, the capital efficiency will drive better returns for investors in fund three. The portfolio is also improving as it seasons. Uh, for deals that were in our portfolio last year in fund three that are still in the portfolio today, you've seen an improvement in valuations on our equity positions of $12 million and of our total portfolio, including debt, of $18 million. Um, this is what you should expect to happen later in a fund. And as you know, these valuation changes are driven, driven primarily by the underlying profitability of our portfolio, which is improving. We also had four exits uh, since last year's annual meeting in Fund 3. And like the Fund 2 exits, these are highly representative of the deals you'll see in our funds, private equity-backed deals, independent sponsor deals, and direct with management teams. These four represent um, all three of those categories. Um, and collectively, they represent very profitable exit activity for the fund. As Mike mentioned, we're, we're making active distributions in Fund 3, and that's driven largely by these exits and the earnings base uh, of the fund itself. So since inception, Fund 3 has realized $28 million of equity gains. Um, and like I mentioned before, we take a long-term focus on managing the portfolio. And as we monetize, equity realizations increase. And the timing of those equity realizations, as you see, kind of falls in between Fund 1 and Fund 2. And we expect that to continue for the duration of the fund. So Fund 3 is profitable. We're generating $11 million of run rate cash earnings per year. Uh, right now, and that is uh, north of a 13% gross return on called capital um, as of the first quarter. We're making distributions. We've distributed $11.2 million to our Fund 3 investors on $82.5 million of called capital. And uh, during the investment period of Fund 3, we experienced competitive market dynamics. Mike mentioned earlier the, the fire slide. Um, that also existed in Fund 3. Um, and also, a, a pressure from the market to soften our credit discipline a little bit, and we didn't do that. And as a result, we're going to deliver low to mid double digit net IRRs to LPs, which is what we pitched um, to all of you. We're proud of that. And I'll conclude with Plexus Fund 4. Uh, fund 4 is a $400 million fund raised in 2016. You'll recall that Fund 4 has a $300 million levered sleeve 
and a $100 million unlevered sleeve, um, both of which invest in the same deals on the same terms at the same time. Uh, we're on pace with our deployment. We closed the deal last Friday that put us at 32% invested in 14 companies. Um, we've got a great pipeline uh, right now that we expect to complete deployment in a three and a half to four year period in fund four um, as expected and, and consistent with our prior funds. So by now you're all familiar with our uh, vision statement, which includes sticking to what we know. And since our last annual meeting, the seven platform companies in Fund 4 have an average EBITDA of $4.4 million. These seven bars here represent closing EBITDA for those companies. And across the, four, the Fund 4 portfolio, average EBITDA is $4.3 million. So we're staying in the lower end of the middle market where we've always been and where we've told you we're going to operate. And in the same vein as uh, staying in our company strike zone, company size strike zone, uh, we're staying disciplined on structure. We're generally less than four times total leverage in a market that's pushing a lot higher than that. And uh, we're, we're staying very disciplined in that credit underwriting, despite market pressure to, to move elsewhere. We've called 18% of capital in the levered fund in fund four. We'll call 15 to 25% of your private capital commitment in the levered sleeve during the time we invest the fund. And we've called 29% of the unlevered commitment. Of course, the unlevered uh, sleeve doesn't have leverage, so each deal we close is purely private capital. We'll always have more called in the unlevered sleeve. Plan to call 20 to 30% of your commitment in the unlevered sleeve while we invest. Fund 4's leverage sleeve has 52 million of its 150 million of available SBA leverage drawn at a very favorable rate of 3%. And we'll continue drawing that capital at a two to one ratio uh, in the leverage sleeve until we reach the fund max of 150 million. So just in conclusion for fund four, fund four is less than two years old. Uh, we're executing on our strategy. The fund is performing very well. We're on a great trajectory there. And we're confident that as long as we stick to the lower end of the middle market, keep investing in best in class talent, stay disciplined in our credit structures, We'll deliver returns to our fund for investors consistent with your expectations and our targets. So thank you for your attention while we walk through this detail. Um, feel free to reach out to any of us with questions about anything in the funds, and I'll turn it over to my partner, Kel Landis.